Welcome to the Gallery of Daya Iban Folklore. This episode features a folklore about the planet Venus. We know Venus as the second planet after the Sun. It is the brightest natural object in the night sky after the Moon. It can be seen in the west just after dusk as the evening star, or as the Earth revolves around the Sun in the east a little while before dawn as the morning star. In Daya Iban folklore, the evening star or Bintang Buyu and the morning star Bintang Timur are two different stars. They are not allowed to be seen together in the sky at the same time. Here is why. The evening star and the morning star. Long ago, there lived a young girl called Noor in a Daya Ibanong house under the leadership of a chief named Buntang Raga. The longhouse was located at the river mouth of Tagaya River. One day, the longhouse residents found that the maiden Noor was pregnant. As the chief of the longhouse, Buntang Raga went to ask Noor who the father of her unborn child was. Because according to their norms and customs, it was taboo for a child to come into the world without knowing who the father was. And the father had the obligation to acknowledge his own child. However, the girl stubbornly refused. She said she did not want to put the blame on any man. Accepting her decision, Puntang Raga said to her, If you are set to break the taboo we are observed, then you must slaughter a pig. If anyone asks who the child's father is, we'll say it's a pig. Only if we do that can we appease the spirits from being angry, and everyone in this longhouse can be free from the repercussions of the offense you've committed. Therefore, Puntang Raga and the rest of the longhouse residents helped Noor perform Be'apai Kababi, a ritual performed for a child for whom no man would acknowledge fertility and for whom a pig was sacrificed. In time, Noor gave birth to a boy they called him Liu. Both mother and son lived in the longhouse of Puntang Raga for three years before she decided to leave the longhouse. She could not stand hearing her son being called using a derogatory phrase Ba'apai ke babi or the son of a pig or in other words, a bastard. She went to the upstream of Takayang River and built a hut for her son and herself to live. From then on, she was free from all the talks of the longhouse residents. At the same time, she was faced with juggling the task of making a living and raising her infant son all by herself without the help of anyone. Her toddler grew into a young child. One morning, Yu was hungry, and he asked his mother for some rice. His mother was busy working on something else, and had not had the time to cook rice. He screamed and screamed for rice, disobeying his mother's request for him to wait for a while. She finally lost her patience and hit his head with a wooden spoon for refusing to wait. The blow broke the skin on the back of his head. As blood gushing out, Yu screamed louder and ran out of the hut to avoid his mother. He did not stop running once he got out. He kept on running all day, all night, for days. By the time he stopped running, he did not know how to find his way home, so he had no choice but to continue walking forward. 
at home, nor regretted what she did, especially when she saw the drops of blood on the floor. She went after her son, but she could not find him anywhere. Then she waited for him to come back. Alas, he did not. After three months had passed, Noor accepted that her son died somewhere in the jungle. She could not bear to live in the hut that reminded her of her son and why she lost him. So she decided to move away. She went far and beyond the land to find a new place for her to live. Finally, she settled at the upstream of Aga River. She built herself a small house and lived there year after year. Nobody ever came to visit her, and she never looked for anyone for company. Until one day, when the sun reached the top of the trees, she heard a male's voice calling from outside. Whose house is this? Is there anyone home? She answered, This is my house. You can come in. A young man came in and asked if he could rest inside the house for a while. She gave him the permission and welcomed him to sit on the floor of the living room. Following the customs of the Daya Ibans of Serbs, she asked him who he was and where he was from. The young man did not answer any of her questions. Instead, he told her about his journey, traveling all around the land. Listening to him talking, she realized how much she missed talking to another human being. They talked until it was time to have dinner, and she ended up serving him meals, and offered him a roof over his head that night. When morning came, she offered him to stay another day in her house. He looked pleasantly surprised, and pointed it out to her that he did not see anyone else living in the house with her. He then asked why she lived in the middle of nowhere, all by herself. She was too ashamed to tell him about her past, so she asked him about himself instead of answering. Somehow, he understood that she did not want to talk about her past as much as he did not want to talk about his. He accepted her offer to stay another day, and they had a silent understanding of never to mention each other's past in their talks. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months. The man never left her house. As time went by, they lived together like husband and wife. One morning after breakfast, the man asked her to look for fleeces in his hair. As she was parting the hair at the back of his head, she saw a dented scar. Oh dear, what happened to your head? She touched the scar lightly. Oh, Dad, my mother hit me with a wooden spoon when I was a child, he replied. That's why I ran away from home and never returned. Hearing his answer, her heart contracted. Do you remember your mother's name? She asked with a shaky voice. Her name is Nor, if I remember correctly. And what name did she call you? She dreaded hearing his answer. Liu. She let go of his hair to stifle her cry. He was surprised and turned to her. What's the matter? I am known. Looking at his baffled face, she added, I am your mother. You are my son. What? He was flabbergasted. Why didn't you tell me this from the very beginning? He raised his voice. 
I didn't know you were my son. I asked about you and where you came from, but you never answered any of my questions. I don't have the answers to your questions. I don't know who my father is, so I can't explain where he's from or who his people are. And I grew up alone in the jungle, among wild animals. I didn't come from any long house. How could I introduce myself properly to you, or to anyone for that matter? I don't know my own roots, but you do. Why didn't you tell me who you were? I would have known you were my mother. He was so upset that he refused to speak to her for the rest of the day. She thought he was going to leave. However, he came to speak to her when the sun had set. What are we going to do now? He asked her. She sighed. What's done is done. We can't turn back the time. She continued after a pause. I'd like you to continue living here with me, if you don't mind. He was silent for a long time before he agreed, and so they continued their life as if that day never happened. Years after, a hunter came across their house during one of his hunting trips. Since he arrived after dark, you offered him to stay with them overnight. During their talk in the evening, following the customs. Nor asked the hunter who he was and where he was from. The hunter replied, "I'm Jaga, son of Laya. I come from a longhouse at the river mouth of Tagaya River, under the leadership of Chief Puntang Raga." Excited to meet someone who came from the longhouse where she used to live, Nor asked him the news about some of the residents she knew. Her guest happily gave her the information, but then he asked with curiosity how she came to know these people. So Nor told him her story, that she and Liu used to live in the very same longhouse. They spent the whole night talking about the latest happenings in Puntang Raga's longhouse. The next morning. The hunter left them to continue his hunting trip, and once he finally came home, he told the residents of his longhouse that he met Nor and her son Liu, and how curious it was that they seemed to behave like husband and wife. Upon hearing this, Buntang Raga did not waste time to gather all the elders in the longhouse. And they set off to look for Nur's house. As soon as they got there, Puntang Raga spoke to both Nur and Liu. Both of you have committed a great offense. I do not understand why you think you can continue living like this, when you know that it is wrong. I cannot allow you to do this any more. It must stop now. Since it is clear that you two cannot make the right decision by yourselves, I will have to make the decision for you. From today onward, you cannot see each other ever again. You, Nor, walk towards where the sun sets, and continue walking until the day you die. And you, Liu, walk towards where the sun rises and never look back. Please understand that this story happened when the edge of the land met the foot of the sky. So there was no way the two of them would meet, even if they continued walking until the end of time. And so it was decided, and that was how it was done. Nor and Liu walked, following the different paths that Puntang Raga had given them. Until the end of their lives. Upon their deaths, 
each of them was turned into a star. Nor turned into bintang buyu, the evening star, that is visible in the western sky at dusk, and disappears shortly before midnight. And Liu turned into bintang timo, the morning star, that is visible in the eastern sky before dawn, and disappears before noon. This is how the Daya Ibans explain why the two stars, Bintang Buyu and Bintang Timor, cannot be seen at the same time in the sky. They are obeying Puntang Raga's command that they cannot see each other face to face for eternity. The end. See you in the next episode.